the top 5 ethical hacking videos from the G-Man channel. First up is John the Ripper. If you have forgotten a password, or you are required to try and break into accounts for ethical hacking, John the Ripper is the tool to use. To locate John the Ripper, you click the icon on the top left, in the menu called Password Attacks. We require two files for the example, a file called passwd and shadow, both stored in the etc folder. As shown, we can view passwd and its contents using the cat command. We can also do the same with the shadow file, but as this is list of hashes for passwords, you need permissions to view. So use sudo. All you have to do now is copy the username details for Joseph, or whatever username you are using. Open the nano editor, creating a file called passwd and paste the details in there. Make sure this file is on the desktop. Once saved, you will see the file on your desktop on the left. We are going to carry out the very same operation for the shadow file, copying the hash value for Joseph and pasting it into a file called shadow on the desktop. As you can see in this example, the shadow file is protected for obvious reasons, so requires sudo to read. Create the shadow file. As you can see, the shadow file is now on your desktop. Part of the process is to merge the two files, passwd and shadow together, creating a third file called unshadow.txt. This will also appear on the desktop. We are now going to show the location of the word lists, which contain thousands of pre-prepared passwords. This is in a folder called user forward slash share forward slash word lists. I have created my own password list file for the purposes of demonstration called jin hyphen password.txt. Before cracking it, take a look at the contents of your unshadow file on the desktop. It has merged the username and password hash. We are now going to get to crack the password using John the Ripper. Coming up is a rather lengthy command. We are going to use the John command followed by the hyphen hyphen word lists. This will then be equal to the location of the word list containing the stored passwords. Following that, we are then going to be using a particular format with the crypt format being used to crack it. The unshadow.txt file on the desktop is being targeted. Type in your sudo account password and you will see the password for the Joseph account. There you have it, you have now cracked the Joseph account, proving that Joseph certainly didn't have a strong password at all. Next up at number 2 is Hydra, which uses a brute force technique. Hydra is a logging cracker which is fast and flexible, making it useful for ethical hackers to show how easy it would be to gain an authorized access to a system. There are two versions, the graphical interface and the CLI. In this video, we are using purely CLI. 
There is much to learn with Hydra, but as this is a basic introduction, use the Hydra minus help command to review the settings. We will be using minus L and minus P. Within Kali Linux, there are multiple word lists within the user share word lists folder. You can use one of the default word lists like Rocku, but for this demonstration I have created my own word list, here shown as jin-password.txt. It will make it quicker for the demonstration, as this particular list is quite small. Now for the following Hydra command. Type in sudo hydra minus l, speech marks the username of the device, close speech marks, minus p, then the name of the word list, backslash and press enter. On the second line, type in the IP address of the device you are trying to access, followed by SSH. Press enter and allow for Hydra to do its thing and brute force the device with your word list. The longer the word list, the longer it will take, but this is quite a quick process in this demonstration. As you can see, the password was pretty easy to crack and this is an example of why we should always use tough passwords. Act 3 is Metasploit, an extremely popular penetration testing framework. If you want to gain remote access to a machine, using Metasploit and its associated modules is what you need. Metasploit can be used for gaining access to a remote machine for installation of malware, privilege escalation etc. This is for educational purposes and should never be tried on the public internet. 1. Conduct a scan of your network subnet or target machine to find the potential vulnerabilities. Here we have two machines, Kali Linux is the attacker on the left. Metasploitable, the target is on the right. We are going to be using Nmap to then enumerate the device and find its vulnerabilities within various protocols of which there are many. Gather information from your scan and place in a notepad file. So you know the ports and services to check for vulnerabilities. This is a very useful habit to get into, as you will be gathering a lot of information during the pen test process. Good housekeeping and note taking is essential. Two. Now it is time to use the information from your scan to try and gain access. Start the Metasploit console. Type msf console and press enter. This will take a little while to load, but not enough time to make a coffee. Metasploit is starting. 3. Search within Metasploit for the services displayed on Nmap. This will help with the remote access. We will be using modules within the services to achieve our goal. Here, we have taken a specific piece of text, Samburis MB 3.0.2, and will search this in Metasploit on the left. It has found an exploit. 4. This selects the specific module that will be used for exploitation. Type use, followed by the module number. In this case, U0. You are now in the correct module context and will be using the options within this module to begin the exploit. 5. Configure the details that you are going to use for exploit. Information such as the local host, remote host, port numbers etc. Here, I am setting the remote host IP address, which is the IP address of Metasploit. Six, the phase where we aim to take control of the target machine using exploit. You will now own the remote machine. We have now gained remote access to Metasploitable using a weakness in the SMB protocol. We can perform all kinds of operations on here commands or drop malware on the device, if we so wish. The application on Metasploitable has been built poorly. We broke in using a vulnerability in the SMB protocol.
7. Time for one more exploit. This time, we are going to try exploiting FTP. VSFTPD to be precise. Perform the same action again, by taking the information from the nmap scan and searching for it in Metasploit. Perfect, there is only one exploit for VSFTPD. Do the same actions again, by providing the relevant details for the options. Set the R host's IP address. Hit exploit and you will find that we have gained access again. We are now logged in as root on this system and have full access again. The owner is unaware at this stage and a good hacker will mask his access. I have created my own folder and can drop any files in here I wish. I can also exfiltrate data. This is a very high level overview of Metasploit and its basic functions for ethical hacking. There is a lot more to Metasploit and we have only just scratched the surface. Fourth is Burp Suite, our favorite web application testing framework. First, turn on both Kali Linux and Metasploitable. There is an application called Mutility within Metasploitable. We are going to require the IP address of the Mutility application, so that we can intercept the packets using Burp Suite. Run an ifconfig for that information. Start up a browser session using the IP address of the application, in my case it's 192.168.1.134. This will get us to the simple interface for Metasploitable, which is a hacker's dream. The list of applications is shown, such as DVWA and Mutility. As we are going to be pen testing the Mutility website, click the link to get to it and familiarize yourself with the interface. It's fairly basic, actually it looks like it is from the early 1990s. It does have a database of usernames and passwords to log in to specific accounts. In this test, we are going to require two browsers to be passing through the Burp Suite proxy, so that we can look closely at the packets. So start up Burp Suite and check the proxy settings. To do this, click Pass Temporary Project and start Burp. It can take a while to start sometimes, so be as patient. So what you need to do here is just check the proxy settings within Burp Suite by clicking on the Proxy tab. There is an Intercept Off and Open Browser button, which we will come back to. Click on the Proxy Settings tab and it will show the IP address of the loopback and its port, which is currently set to 8080. For now, we are going to check the proxy settings within the Firefox browser. To achieve this, go to the three dots within Firefox on the top right and click on Settings on the menu. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you will see the Network Settings button and this is where you configure the proxy to match Burp Suite. Click on the radio button, so it is set to be the loopback IP address and port 80 when you visit Mutility. For the first part of this test, we are going to visit the Mutility website using the built-in browser. We need to turn on the Intercept is on service, so that Burp Suite can intercept each packet and show the contents. Once you type in the IP address of Mutility in the built-in browser, you will need to click on the forward button, so that each packet can be allowed through and you can get to the website page. The website is now visible. What we want to do here is go to the login page for the site and log in with details of a user that I have taken from a previous pen test. In this case, the username is admin and the password is adminpass. Once again, click the forward button to allow the packets through and you will be able to see the website login and view the contents of the packet that has logged in. 
The information we really want to get our hands on is the cookie information. Copy this cookie session ID information into a notepad file for later on. Keep this browser open and switch to the second browser. This is what the second browser is for, we are going to test the security of the website by using the session cookie from the previous login and test if the second browser is allowed in or not. Revisit the proxy settings within Firefox again, just to confirm it is using port 80. Perform the same task as the first browser, but navigating to the Mutility website login page. Click on the forward button if you need to. Once again, make sure that the intercept is on, so you can grab the packets again. At this point, we want to make sure that you take the cookie details that you copied earlier are still on your notepad. You can see the new session ID details in the packet on the left, taken from Firefox. The notepad file is on the screen with the old cookie ID, so copy this and then paste this into the cookie ID of the packet that is currently showing on Burp Suite. By hitting the forward button here, you are essentially allowing this packet to be forwarded to Mutility and as you can now see, the application has allowed that packet in. You are now logged in as Monkey, the admin username from the previous session from the first browser and you didn't even need their login details. And this is how you pen test a website using cookie session IDs, using the Burp Suite application. Last and definitely not least is Fern Wi-Fi Cracker, a most important tool for testing the password strength of your Wi-Fi. Please be aware this is for educational purposes and ethical hacking only and should never be tried on the public internet. If a Wi-Fi password has weak security, then Fern will find that flaw. You can access Fern by visiting the menu and typing Fern and click on the yellow icon. It will fire up with a green icon and then a simple interface will appear. Fern Wi-Fi application works similar to other techniques like John the Ripper or Hydra, where they will use a word list in the user share word lists folder. I am using my old Jin hyphen password text file again, which is a much shorter word list. Just to demonstrate, there is a Rocky file in here which has millions of stored passwords. Running a cat on this will show just how many there are. I'll stop that process as it's endless. Now, turn on the Wi-Fi monitoring in Fern, so on the Select Interface drop-down, select your WLAN interface. Then click on the blue Wi-Fi icon to scan for access points that are broadcasting. We are only dealing with WPA Wi-Fi, so I am going to check my own Wi-Fi as checking others is not legal. From within Fern, we have to select the word list we are going to use for the attack. Click on the Browse button to locate this. Navigate to the user-share-word lists folder and select your text file. In this example, mine is the gin-password file. That has now been populated. There will be several devices on your network, so select the one you are going to check. I am picking my mobile phone from the drop-down menu, and we then click on the attack button on the top right of Fern. What Fern will do is send a D-Auth packet to the phone, disconnecting it from the Wi-Fi and allowing it to reconnect with its stored Wi-Fi credentials. I have placed my phone on the right of the screen so you can see the Wi-Fi disconnecting and reconnecting. During this handshake process, the Wi-Fi tries to reconnect and Fern with its word list is scanning for the correct password. As you can see at the bottom of the Fern screen, it has found the correct password, shown in red. Thank you for watching this video and we hope you made it through all 5 techniques. Everyone has a favorite, so please post in the comments below about which one you like the most. Like, share and subscribe and we will see you again very soon I am sure.